The purpose of this video is to provide information on development permit areas and the process for determining whether a development permit may be required for a project you're looking to do in the Regional District of Central Kootenai. So what exactly are DPAs and development permits? Development permit areas are spaces where specific objectives and development guidelines are in place to ensure a community's long-term vision is achieved as development takes place over time. They are found in a community's official community plan, which is a document that describes the long-term vision of a community and states the objectives and policies that are used to guide decision-making in that area. What kinds of development permit areas are in a community depends on what the long-term vision is, and it varies from community to community. Some of the things that development permit areas do include preserving the form and character of commercial areas, Ensuring that new commercial, industrial, and multifamily development is designed in a way that is consistent with the community's expectations. Considering areas where natural hazards exist and direct development away from those areas into places where the hazard is less likely to occur. And to protect the natural environment from the impacts of human disturbance. DPAs can be in place for more reasons than these, but these are just some of the most common ones encountered in the RDCK. So now that we know a little more about DPAs, we'll talk about where you can find more information on them and what kinds of activities require development permits. DPAs cover physical areas and are triggered by certain types of activities. One of the most common types of DPAs are environmental, which can be found near watercourses like lakes, creeks, rivers, ravines, wetlands, and other types of water features. Another DPA found in many of the RDCK's bylaws is for intensive residential development where five or more new lots or new units are being proposed. There are also DPAs in place for industrial land uses where a new industrial use or building is being proposed. DPAs can also be in place for commercial or tourist commercial land where new commercial uses or buildings or tourist accommodation uses are being proposed. Land that is designated for high-density residential use may also require a development permit. Finally, the last type of development permit area that may apply in the regional district is for farm-related activities that involve food processing facilities in Electoral Area K. You can find more information on what DPAs might apply in the Electoral Area that you live in or are working in by reviewing the Official Community Plan or Comprehensive Land Use Bylaw for that area. Not every area has the same DPAs, and in some electoral areas of the regional district, there aren't any DPAs at all. Each electoral area has either an official community plan or comprehensive bylaw that applies to at least a portion of that area. To determine whether your land falls within the plan area, have a look at the mapping schedules attached to the bylaw or the plan. If you're still having trouble, give our planning department a call and they can help you figure out if an OCP or bylaw is in place and whether there are DPAs that apply to your land. To find these bylaws and plans, visit the Land Use Bylaws page on our website. As I mentioned before, DPAs are put in place to achieve a set of objectives. DPA objectives outline the purpose for why the DPA is in place in the first place and what exactly it is that it's trying to accomplish. Examples could include screening industrial uses from surrounding areas, protecting water quality, or limiting the risk associated with living near an area prone to natural hazards. So how exactly do we achieve these objectives? The answer is through guidelines. Guidelines are in place to ensure that the activity or development taking place is carried out in a way that will help achieve the objectives laid out for that DPA. Someone must apply for a development permit before undertaking certain activities within a DPA. The RDCK cannot issue a development permit until the guidelines for that area are met. The last noteworthy point on guidelines is that each DPA will have different guidelines depending on what the objectives are in that area. So now we'll cover situations where a development permit is not required. Each DPA has a specific set of exemptions that might apply to it. As is the case for guidelines, exemptions differ between development permit areas, so it's important to understand which ones do and don't apply to the DPA that might affect your property. Exemptions may apply to work such as repairs to existing buildings or internal renovations, certain types of low disturbance uses, 
or projects where the guidelines have already been met and a permit has already been issued, just to name a few. The last topic this video will cover is the process for determining whether a development permit applies to you. So the first thing that we do is ask the question, is this activity within a development permit area? If the answer is no, then a development permit is not required. If the answer is yes, then we ask the question, does the project involve any of the trigger activities for that development permit area? If the answer is no, then once again, a development permit is not required. If it does involve one of those activities, then the final question that we ask is, does the project meet any of the exemption criteria that are listed in the DPA? If the answer is yes, then a development permit is not required. If the answer is no, then a development permit will be required. The next step is to contact the RDCK planning department for more information on submitting a complete application. And RDCK staff will be able to help walk you through the application process. If you'd like to learn more about land use planning in the RDCK, visit the community planning page on our website. Here you'll be able to find more information on development permits, zoning, and other helpful information on land use.